So first of all, I really want to thank you all from my from the bottom of my heart that you are again and again always here and share your feelings, your thoughts, your deep realizations with us all. Thank you for that. At least I can say that in every sharing I can take some jewels with me of your sharing. So even though we are bereft of Gurudev's association the last time, but still I feel that he's always speaking through all of you and he's here in every moment. So Suniti Didi was actually taking a verse out of Vilap Kusumanjali, verse number 38, and she wanted to share it today, so I'm just a reader. Oh, and Gauravani, you are the, the feeler, you are the speaker, you are the one that creates the waves, and you are the one that is uh, channeling the... Uh, the inspirations and uh, we are all I, I want to express some feelings um, my mind is suffering a little bit when in the zooms always the same devotees only a few or so are expressing and sharing my heart would be fully fully more happy if more devotees also speak something express something, not waiting maybe to be asked or maybe too shy and, you know, it's not a good feeling to to be always the same people because I know some devotees also suffer from this. I feel it. Nobody is, exp you know, complaining to me, but I just feel the vibration that it would be much better if we can all more become uh, friendly and also dare to share. And I am uh, very much uh, open and um, we are all friends. We are all in the same age. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's be a, a friends sharing here and not only some devotees who maybe are uh, maybe senior in age or something i feel uh, it would be nice if, if more are sharing and caring and not be shy i like to hear from all of your emotions and learn from all of you and get to know all of you that's all I want to share. And so I'm so happy that you are reading today and sharing today, Gauravani. For me, there is no difference between you and me. <laughs> In a way, you know, we are all the small I dancing. understand, sister. I understand. And I agree. I agree with you that I also would like to hear all others because there's no... Uh, there is no base to have fear or shyness because when we serve Radha, we cannot be shy. So take this as a challenge and don't be shy now because you cannot be shy in the service of Radha. So please, all of you, share because it's about feeling. It's not about knowledge. No one will will see it on the platform of, platform of knowledge or uh, something like this. So again, we are without translators. We just wait a little bit that this is set. All the translations are set again. So I agree that it would be really nice if all of you would share. Yes. 
My experience is like this. When I share my feelings, then others understand me more and they can help me more, actually, because they see my my situation more clear. And then out of their love, they can offer me some help. Also, everybody who knows me knows also that I don't want to accept help. But at least it's an offer, you know. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Now we have English, Japanese, German, Croatian, and Italian. Wonderful. Don't so I will start to be the uh, the shuka of Suniti Didi. We are reading Vilap Kusumanjali, verse number thirty-eight. Kana yor upari chakra salake chanchalakshi nihite mayakate. Kshobakam nikila gopa vadunang chakravat prihamaya tang mura shatrum. O chanchalakshi. Restless eyed girl. Although mura shatru, Krishna agitates all the gopis, I make him spin like a disc with the disc-shaped hairpins that I blaze above your ears. Again, O Chanjalakshi, Restless eyed girl. Although Murashatru agitates all the gopis, I make him spin like a disc with the disc shaped hairpins that I place above your ears. Explanations. The visions of devotional service and the end of those visions follow each other successively, creating simultaneously an amazing satisfaction and Agony. Maybe someone wants to share their feelings about this. I find this is a very amazing point. Next sentence also, Gauravan. Okay, we will read a little bit more and then you will share something. This agony is a deeply relishable bliss. Although Shiladas Goswami is an eternal maidservant of Sri Radhika, he always feels as if he loves her for the first time. Regardless, of what condition he is in. At every moment, the awareness of the lack of direct meeting with the beloved deity arises in the heart. How great is his agony! I have fallen on the bank of your lake. Please take me to your lotus feet. Knowing me to be your fallen maidservant. 
This is very um, inspiring to me because I understand that on the highest level of devotion, the agony and the feeling of separation is not miserable. When I feel miserable, I feel miserable. <laughs> My agony most of the time comes from the root of self-pity. That is just being honest. But when Raghunath Das is miserable, that is from his deep feelings of separation. These feelings are so pure because they root in the meetings that he has had before, in the service that he has felt before. So my agony in the Sadaka Deha and his agony in his Siddha Deha is a big difference. But still, I feel so much hope when I hear this. That his love for Swamini is always nourished by his feelings of, I want to meet her for the first time. I want to meet her. He never, he never feels that, oh, I have met her before and now my sadhana, my, my prayers are perfected. No, I have never met her before. So in a way, this is also my position. Swamini, I want to know you. Swamini, I want to serve you. Let me serve you. I have never met you before. I have heard so much about you from my Gurudev, from all my brothers and sisters, from all the Rasika Vaishnavas. I would like to, you know, feel you more. Please help me with this. I was just like meditating on this the last few days when I had to struggle with my sadhana, when there was so much confusion in my mind, when there were emotions that were not helpful for my sadhana. But then I came to one conclusion and that really immediately, it helped me out of this agony that I am not capable to do sadhana. But my Gurudev, he is loving me so much. That is my hope. I cannot really go deep in bhajan. I have so many blockages in my heart, in my mind. I have so many misconceptions. Yes, I have heard a lot of things. And I am lucky that I am attracted to hearing. I am lucky. I feel lucky that I want to be with you all and listen and, and learn from you. But at one point I felt, even though I have no deep realizations, somehow Swamini will one day give me entrance. My agony is not pure. My heart is not pure like Raghunath Das Goswami's heart. But still there is this hope because my Gurudev has hope in me. Because all of you have hope in me. So that is my hope and these are my prayers sometimes. I just want to be honest. I'm not floating every day in the highest feelings of Radha Dasya. Often I feel also covered and blocked. And my separation feelings are not always happy bliss. <laughs> <laughs> they are sometimes sad. But here with uh, the example of Raghunath Das Goswami, and with all of your help, there is some hope that even though hope against hope, it will be a day when I feel more than now my blockages allow me to feel 
And when I listen to you, I also become uplifted and my heart becomes opened. So that I want to share on this. That's why it's inspired me. And that even Raghunath Das Goswami, he was going from vision to vision and from Sakshat Darshan, from direct meeting sometimes out of his, you know, Avesh. And he is, you know, his agony is actually bliss. Why? Because there is some uh, repetition after all. But for us, where there is no repetition, because there's not such a deep realization, then even the feeling that, please, open my heart, open my, my vision, please, good, if be merciful, and let me keep my patience to go on trying and go on crying in whatever consciousness it will be. That is my hope, and these are my prayers, and I want to share this with you because I'm just a simple, very simple devotee who tries to, you know, be a good Darcy one day. Radi Radi. Thank you for these sweet words. I, you said one thing which I was thinking about. Um, my suffering is not pure or my agony is not pure. I was thinking on this point some days ago. Actually, when we suffer, we often think it's because of I didn't get this and this. Uh, subject or I didn't get the brace I wanted to have or I didn't want I didn't get the car I wanted to have or whatever you know just some material things but actually this is not why we suffer we suffer the whole time because actually we are not together with our Swamini and this is actually why we suffer. But the false ego is telling us, no, no, your suffering is just because of this and because of that and because she said and he said and this and that and whatever. So actually the false ego is actually cheating us. That's why I, I can say, yes, my agony is not pure because the false ego is telling me something why I suffer. So in this moment, I cannot understand that actually I'm missing Radharani. But, and this is the difference, the highest station of we can, the, the highest point we can get in this sadhaka is that we have full awareness of our agony to be bereft of the association of Swamini and her beloved. If we do understand this every moment when we are in the sadaka, then we will automatically start to pray, start to cry after Swamini, after her lotus feet, after her seva. So this is actually what Srila Raghunadas is living. So that means the highest agony on this platform is actually bliss. We think it's agony, but it's bliss. It's not suffering, it's bliss. It's the bliss to be aware that we need this association. We need the lotus feet of our Swamini. <laughs> So this is the agony, and on the other side, when the visions come, then he is in amazing satisfaction, which is tried to be described here in this book. We actually can only understood when we are going in our Sita Deha into that feeling. So we have to follow this example. 
but actually this is the, the point i think in in the first two lines already it's so amazing that this vision of devotion and service and the end of those visions follow each other sus successively creating simultaneously an amazing satisfaction and agony. So this is the situation Srila Raguna does is in. And if we want to be in that situation one day, we should try, really try to throw ourselves in this ocean of feelings which he is offering us. Thank you for this uh, open-hearted uh, sharing. So I want also to add something about agony to continue this discussion. Shilaran <laughs> Gosama Raj told if we have some feeling connected to us with this world, it will be so good if we will convert this feeling, which is connected with that world. For example, agony. Because of how uh, Andaka Prabhu told me, whatever is cooking us here by temperature, <laughs> making the same temperature. Because I'm feeling, for example, I'm feeling maybe no hope. <laughs> how can I get it? How can I receive it? She created this mood inside by some different situations and or words his words for words of someone. And by this uh, temperature, it's actually in comparison with agony, what we are reading now, it's nothing. But by this temperature, gradually mind become more, how to say, like this, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Before, no, no, no. <laughs> no, yes, 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 he could have tolerance. And I remember one example of Shurupa such situation. He had so much desire to serve Shimati Radhika. And he, he thinking, what can I do to receive this? Receive and he's remembering what Dhru Maharaj did. Great, great authority in five years old. What great uh, things did Prahada Maharaj and so many great personalities from Bhagavatam. And in comparison of when, what can I do? And his hand, like, like this. Then he's remembering, oh, Krishna is, uh, has one Shakti. Agata Gatana Patias Shakti. This Shakti means Shimati Radhika. She can do, she can give that what is not possible to give. But what is not possible to achieve, she's giving. And then he's remembering what does mean endless ocean of mercy. This is mean if you come into the ocean, it has so many waves. Because ocean has uncountless waves. He just gave anyone who can come into the bank of the ocean. Brahmi, sannyasi, shudra, dogs, dog eater. No matter, anyone will receive this mercy of waves of ocean. This is what does mean endless ocean of mercy of Shimati Radhika. Then Shri again receive his hope. Oh, you understand? And I'm thinking, when I receive this situation, a little of agony inside, I'm thinking about nature of my Guru Dev. Who is he? And I understand, no, he is not leaving me. He will continue. He just created this situation. He will help me to reach my goal. And again, hope coming. 
I was just thinking about a very um, practical example. If a child was running away from home, of course, it was suffering. But there are different kinds of sufferings. In the end, it meets a person who knows the parents. And this person is actually giving a call to the parents. And then in this moment, the child hears mama on the phone and mama is telling, just stay there, my loving child. I will come and pick you up. In this moment, again, agony is coming. It's crying and crying and crying. But there's also this hope and this, this loving connection with the mother. So actually this could be a little hint to that, maybe. Oh, beautiful explanation. <laughs> because, because, so, but the mother say, I'm coming. Still, children, until children meet mother, agony will continue, or anxiety will continue. 
the mother come, then agony will disappear. This situation, mother is coming or seeing mother, but immediately the mother disappear. And then <laughs> agony start, you know, coming. Also, you know, also sometimes, oh, I met mother, you know, some satisfaction, but uh, still, oh, disappear, or oh, what to do? <laughs> Maybe this is not similar, but, uh, you know, so Gorabani Babu describes a very nice, you know, example. May I, may I also share something? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Please. <clears throat> I'm grateful for your words and for your open-hearted sharing. sharing. I cannot see Sudevi, why she's not on the, on the screen. Um, I can must see myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm desperately searching for a way to integrate, for this hidden path of, of devotion, to integrate my to integrate transcendental feelings and um, and immanent feelings i'm searching for a way that it is that in the immanence in this material relations in my body, in my connection with earth and all the living beings, that there are the hints, the ways to appreciate, to be together with my Swamini. And that I don't have to go in such a deep meditation, which, which is not possible for me. And only then, perhaps, eventually, I can be together as a manjari. Wouldn't it be in all relationships that I'm that there is a spark of being together with Swamini? That that in all love, perhaps also in all. I, yes, I heard this 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 sentence. Love requires failure love requires death so it is such an intense um struggling with this and swamini is the ocean of compassion she has been here in vracha bumi on this planet on this beloved earth and i'm a living being in this earth so Everything could be a hint for Swami. My senses are there to love her, not to be distinct from her. So. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sudevi. So nice. Full of feelings. <laughs> Yes, this is what Gurudev was actually telling us all the time. We have to see Swamini in every other creature. Yes. Because she's there. Yes. Her mercy is everywhere. Nothing exists out of love. Nothing exists out of the mercy of Radha. That's the truth. And you made this very clear again for, our, for all of us to remember. Thank you very much. Uh, so, David, personally, I feel the same like you, but I also observe my consciousness. And if I am in the consciousness of separation, or if my consciousness separates me from being close or feeling close to Swamini, then I call this covering or illusion. Mm. And it happens. Yes. It, yes, happens. it happens. Yes. 
and and then when it happens then the agony the the human agony is is more intense but also i experience when the feeling of connection comes back by her grace i will say and her grace has many many channels yes yes then then all is good again it's it's from the human platform because at that moment when i feel connection and when i feel affection again with you know with ho everything how it is that it is also swamini's mercy and that every soul is her her spark or her part okay and has the possibility to go in relation and that we are in the right um uh, association in the right process then uh, it is easy going but the separation feeling that i have in my in my sadaka deha is not the separation feeling that raguna das has that is obvious yes. when so, i come in this separation mood then i feel desperate and then i feel hopeless because see. i see only uh, material things and i i forget who i am so the integration of that would be and that i always uh, try i beg i i i pray and i cry for feeling connected and i go in the association of those who are connected or i uh, go in my mantras i go in my bhajan my singing there's different different ways and sometimes it happens uh, <laughs> very quickly like here with raghunath das goswami he has devotional service then he comes out and then he goes in again and sometimes it also takes a longer time yeah. radhe radhe so nice point from suniti and i can see our situation is that actually we are second hand uh devotees second hand second hand as long as we don't have our own experience as a manjari in the spiritual world we are second hand manjaris so uh, <laughs> we 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 need the feelings uh of from other ma who are in this position and our example it is raghunath das goswami we take his feelings to get the understand of this because we don't have this own experience in the spiritual world because we are not fixed in our manjari uh, swarup and as long as we are not get this we cannot be uh, in the uh, relationship and don't get this feelings i just read a small book now and um, this you can see this it's so beautiful it describes uh the um, the science of vrindavan and especially narottam das and shyamananda pandit and shrinivas acharya and yesterday i read this part when shyamananda found the bracelet of uh, swamini where in in the time of his service and i want to make it short then uh, it was a mercy of swamini to him and uh, lalita came in the form of a older lady there no mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they start a discussion about this gem and she explained something and he understood it but after all he was um, he liked to see swamini directly and so in this process 
Balita guide him. Even he was like Raghunathas in the material body, guide him in the trance to Swamini. In that moment, they enter this, this higher platform. His body changed into a Manjari body. Then, in that moment, he got this vision directly from Swamini, from other Manjaris, and even after all, from Subal. There is a, a beautiful story behind this. Uh, because his own guru was in, a, in another mood, in another bath than the Manjari. He was in a Saki bath, Sakya, Sak Sakya bath. No? And uh, so, but by the mercy of Lalita, he got this vision and became, after all, this, this uh, special tilak and uh, um, bodily. Uh, we has Ausstrahlung? Effulgence. Effulgence. A name, a different name. A different name, by direct mercy. So we can see the difference. What is the meaning of one who experienced this directly? They change his whole life. And one who is only a second-hand uh, 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 Manjari, who get the... Uh, uh, who get it from others, who is like us, we are mercy cases. And we need the mercy of our Gurudev and of our of other Manjaris. And uh, as long as we not got this spark, what uh, Sudevi spoke about, this, uh, this direct view, we cannot really speak about agony. When we got it, then we see also in Raghunathas how much pain is there, what he is feeling when he is separated from Swamini, from his service. No? And then again, he goes in and share with us. So I think our point has to be that we are coming in a direct uh, few experience experience and uh, my biggest desire is really in this life to get this 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 unique few to fall in agony after this like Raghunath do no now we share our uh Different levels also that we experience. Yes, yeah. our, our feelings we share. But I think uh, the goal is really to, to enter in this in a spiritual body. And it's it's the highest position that Guru Dev is, is offering to us. Missing him all very much now. He's no, already here. Gaurav. Where? Yes. Where? Gurudev, are you there? Yes, he's already here. You can see him, but put on the gallery. Radhe Radhe Gurudev, finally. Yeah. Yeah, Gurudev. Oh. Radhe Radhe. Oh, good day. Thank you for listening. Wow. Thank you for being with us and don't speak good day. <laughs> We're missing you so much. We are in agony. Yes, now we got the feeling of separation. You show us. Thank you for coming, good day. Thank you for being with wow. us. Wow. So nice. Go on, Vani. Yes. On. Go on, go on. Bye.
Thank you, Gurudev. We love you. So, Radhe, Radhe. Ah, Gaura Chandra, Jai Ho. Jai. Gaura Chandra, please share. Yeah, something. Yes, yes, come. So we listen that the that the agony of Raghunath Das Goswami is actually is bliss. And Suniti was speaking that her agony is not bliss. <laughs> it's the stress. She feels covered, not deeply connected. But I think there's there is something positive. When we become devotees, then I add bhakti to my life. But I have different subjects also. I have my job, I have my partner, and I have bhakti. I'm doing that. But over time, everything is arranged around our bhakti. Our bhakti becomes center point, our spiritual life. And we arrange our partnership that it is supporting to our spiritual life. And we arrange our job that is supportive to our spiritual life. So I think we should see also that what we already achieved, that our mindset over the years became centered to the point how to live my spiritual life, that is center. And even if you are feeling distressed and not connected, and you feel agony, but not like Raghunath Das Goswami. But still, this agony also coming, um, oh, I'm not connected. I cannot feel. My bhajan is dry. So this agony is also centered around our goal. And that should create some happiness that we are concerned and distressed and unhappy and not sometimes angry or sad. Why? <laughs> because my spiritual life is not flowing or I'm not in the flow. So there's even some positive thing inside of your agony, Suniti, <laughs> that not feels like oh. Raghunath Das Goswami, but it is centered that we want to improve our spiritual life. Jai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this, your feelings. So I think we are anyway living in the material world and this means two sides, right? So we are living in the world of duality. So both has to be there. If we are in material consciousness, we want to be always happy, but in spiritual consciousness, we understand that actually both is needed to remember and to take shelter again. Otherwise, if we wouldn't have any agony, how would we take shelter? And this is what Raguna does is living here. So I want to read Father, and he's saying, I have fallen on the bank of your lake. Please take me to your lotus feet knowing me to be your fallen maidservant. 
the neophyte devotees must learn this eager devotional longing from him. So that's the point. The neophyte devotee, like me, they have to learn this eager devotional longing from someone who has it. So Raguna Das has it. So let us learn from him. The life of a devotee is naturally full of thoughts of the beloved deity and nothing else. His mind wants nothing and nobody else. Such intimacy with Sri Radharani cannot be attained while being engrossed in the mundane kingdom. Now Srila Anandadas Babaji is talking about himself. We have to understand that this is his humbleness he's expressing for us. A person like me has left all his kith and kin far behind to go to Braj, where his mind became absorbed in thinking of temporary things. I am living in Brindavan, where the birds are singing Sri Radhika's glories, where the trees and wines shudder out of love for Sri Radhika, and where each speck of dust is sprinkled with the Mahabhav that emanates from Sri Radhika's food souls. Where is that realization? Sensitive devotees experience the real form of Braj. But fellows, devoid of devotion, see it as just an ordinary mundane place. Therefore, the practicing devotees should give up their material conditionings and bring in their transcendental conceptions. The soul thrives on Brema Rasa and must relish that and attain the honey-sweet association of the divine couple. The soul drives on Brema Rasa and must relish that and attain the honey-sweet association of the divine couple. <clears throat> it is so nice described well, I mean, what also Gurudev is also always explaining that we not have to go to Vrindavan as a tourist. He is making this example that where is this that realization? He explained Vrindavan how it should be, but where is this realization? He say no. So that means. Like the, as long as we are tourists, go to Vrindavan and see this mundane place. We cannot see the beauty. We have to go to Vrindavan and change our senses. 
we have to go Vrindavan and see the the place of Radha and Krishna. The whole time. And to, to watch this inner Vrindavan. But for this, we have to give up this position of a tourist. That means a tourist, what is meaning of a tourist? He, that is a person who is uh, going for holiday somewhere, stay there and go back. But his identification is always as the German, they like uh, Mallorca very much. But when they go to Mallorca, it's a Spanish island, they uh, uh, feel like Germans. And uh, after this many years now, if you go Mallorca, then uh, this um, this island is more German than Germany himself. So it's no no more a Spanish island. You can say it's more German island. And so that is meaning a tourist who is not changing his identification. He goes somewhere to holiday and not changed his mind and so on. And then he went back to his home. But if we change this feeling or this, this bath of a tourist, and when we enter Vrindavan, when we come there and feel, oh, I'm at home. Now I'm at home. I'm an inhabitant of Vrindavan. I'm a person who is living here. I'm, I, in our example, it's I'm a, I'm a Manjari. I depend on Radharani. I have service to do here. This is my place. This is my home. I'm from Javad, but now I'm here to service, cooking, whatever, serving. Then I give up this mood of a tourist and I become inhabitant of Vrindavan. And this will change everything. And this is what our Anandadas Babaji is describing here also for himself. We can stay in Vrindavan, be there or not. It depends on our mood. And then we get all realizations. So maybe let us try to go with Raghunadas to Brindavan to the shore of Radhakund and let us see what he is showing us. Sri Das Goswami sits on the bank of Sri Radhakund and weeps for one of the direct personal service of Srimati Radhika, to whom he has offered his whole mind and heart. The Goswamis have taught by example that if the mind wanders off elsewhere, Swamini is running off. Why won't I become absorbed in you? Why can I not make my life a full success? I will purify my muddy mind with this 
Mahavani. A person who thinks like that is a Bhaktavira, a devotee hero. Sri Raghunath's life airs reach his throat when he suffers the pain of love in separation. Just then he gets a vision. He is no longer Raghunath. Now he is Tulasi Manjari. Swamini, I have put these hoop earrings above your ears. How wonderful is the slight smile that appears on Swamini's face then. Niramala vadana hasarasa parimale malina sudakara ambare roi. When the spotted moon in the sky sees Radhika's spotless face scented with the rasa of laughter, he must cry. Tulasi serves without hesitation. And Swamini also accepts her service without hesitation. Is this only a mental concoction? She accepts all service rendered within the mind. Sridhar Goswami personally relished the sweet rasa of devotional service and taught Vracherata Krishna Prachura Parichayam Iha Tanu Manashiksha 2. Elaborately serve Rata and Krishna in Raj. Serve the heart's friend of Sri Radha within the mind. He will accept it all. This mental service is the very life force of the externally rendered devotional service. Srila Rupa Goswami Oi. has proven. Uh, can you explain again this verse? This is very interesting. The let's do that. The let's. This Sir, mental I service. This mental service. Yes, this mental service is very is the very life force of the externally rendered devotional service. Ah, that, that's an important point, no? That's a very important point in our day-to-day -day life. How do you practice this, Gauravani? I was asked just a few days before from Radha Charan also, like the same, the same question or similar question. Yes, now he don't remembers, but when I say, he will. <laughs> we were talking about this, uh, actually, like example was given by cooking. So a devotee who is in, it depends on his state of bath. Let's say he is in Vaidhi Bhakti. He's going to the kitchen and he's trying to avoid any offense by cooking. And he thinks, I am cooking for Krishna. 
Let me avoid all kind of bad things that could happen to destroy this offering. Should be a paka, nice offering. And I also said in this connection, there is a book, a very thick book, what kind of offenses you could make while just visiting a temple. This is not even cooking. So you may think about this. It's, it's impossible, actually. But it's a good kind of play like a child who wants to build a house for the father. And of course, it will be just out of Lego. Not really a use, but it's a nice try. It's an exchange of love. Some kind. Now the other uh, um, mood. Example. Example. Yes, the other example in another mood. So you are going to the kitchen and you know Mohan is hungry from where you know. Because you feel Radharani is telling you in the heart he wants to have some sweet rice now. So you are going to the kitchen because actually the point is you want to cook something because actually you eat or others eat which are in your family. So, but now the question arises, what to cook? So you meditate. Radharani, what to cook today for your Mohan? What would he like now? Then some inspiration is coming. You may think, oh, maybe it's just a cook. A co cognition uh, impression. Oh, just my thoughts. But actually, if you think like this, well, then you cannot go into this game. And this game is about the exchange of love with Swamini. And please believe it. Just believe it and try it. And then you will make your own experience. So you go and you say, Swamini, I am at your service. I just remember how you go to Nandagram and you cook for your beloved. So let me help you. I can steer for you. I can cut something for you. I can, whatever help I can do for you, please let me somehow be of help. And in this way, actually the preparations will be there in the outer form also. By this meditation, in the end, you're standing before some dishes. And now you are going to give it to Mohan. Then you ask Swamini again, actually, are you going to give him the, the, the dishes or should I do for you? like that. So in this way, your, uh, your smarana, your meditation, together in the service with Swamini, is actually completely combined with your outer doings, your cooking. I think this is a very practical example. Maybe someone wants to add something out of his own experience or it's nice described this mental service now how you also explain it is all made by our mind uh, we use the experience and the knowledge of our mind to to get a, a picture of the service because we have no own experience in our own uh, spiritual body with our spiritual senses. So we need the help of the mind to create a situation what it makes it visible somehow to us by the experience of others. And so this is the big mercy of, of this uh, Raghunathas, Anandadas, Babaji, and all who are explaining this to us, so that our mind can, can create pictures of this. 
and by the mercy of Gurudev, he put a seed into our heart that there is a, a spiritual body growing, spiritual senses growing. And, and on one point, when we are very eager, this body will take over. And in that moment, we can see our service directly with these senses. And this is the, the difference. Then we are really there and we can get it. We get it. This is not a creation by a mental service. This is then, it is an eternal service in the eternal body. So this, to see this mental service, this the very life force of the externally rendered devotional service, because this is our only hope. We have no other. We only have this external possibilities at the moment. But we desire the eternal side. And this is our full greed to, to get it, to get the mercy. And by the blessing of Gurudev and other Manjaris, we will get it and Swamini. Then, then we are, we, we leave this external devotional service and we come to a inner devotional service on a platform of transcendence. Thank you, Kuravani. Thank you. So we can see it as the child is playing in the child room. If he's pack, out, out packing one game, there's a description of the game, how it is played. So Raguna Das is actually giving a very nice description of our game. So how to do the cooking seva, for example. We just have to read it, learn it. We do like him and meditate that we would be him. And then we go to Mama and we bring it. You see, Mama, what we did, you know, here, look. ah, And Mama say, oh, my beloved, so nice and accepts and is giving more mercy, more love, next time it will be better. And one day Mama says, why you don't cook with me in the kitchen? You don't need to play in your room. We can make a real cake for Papa and the family. So like this, actually, it works. It's a very natural way, very natural. And here are some explanations how it's actually coming that it comes from the cross, uh, from the spiritual to the cross, actually. How we can, here are some nice explanations. In his commentary on this verse, Srila Shiva Goswami quotes the story from the Brahma Vavaita Purana about the Brahmana from Pratishtana Pura, who mentally offered hot kshira, sweet rice, to the Lord. But when he did so, actually he, he, he tried if it's too hot. He burned his physical finger by touching it. The condensed form of smarana is jhana, meditation. And the condensed form of meditation is purana, transcendental visions. Srila Raghunadas was a living example of that. It is mentioned in Bhakti Ratnakara that he became sick one day. So Vitalnath, the son of Vallabha Acharya, called for a doctor who said that Raghunadas was suffering from indigestion. 
what means he has eaten too much. <laughs> Vitalnath, who knew that Raghunathas was renunciation personified and that he hardly ate anything at all, refused to believe that. But the doctor insisted. <coughs> Raghunadas then confirmed the doctor's diagnosis, saying, It is true. I had mentally offered Kshira, sweet rice, to Radha and Krishna, and I mentally ate too much of the remnants of their enjoyed food. This is one of the several occasions in which the mental contact with God becomes physically manifest. So here's the proof that it works this way around and in Anurag the other way around also. First we do Raga and then it comes back Anuraga also. The answer is you burn your finger in the hot sweet rice, mentally offered, but the finger is burned really. That's the mercy. So if you don't have any questions or comments or other sharings on this, then I will read, I will go on. In a vivid vision, Tulasi places hoop earrings above Srimati's ears. Srimati is still absorbed in the blazing of the jewel string on her left arm. Her body consists of, ma of bath, and it is as if she searches for someone with her restless eyes. Tulasi attracts her mind by saying, Oh, Chanchalakshi, restless-eyed girl, your eyes restlessly go here and there, mistaking every object to be Krishna. Hence, I call you Chanchalakshi or restless-eyed girl. Swamini says, Tulasi, for whose sake have you ornamented me? Tulasi replies, I will make Murashatru, who agitates all the gopis with his matchless, all-attractive beauty and sweetness, spin around like a disc. When he cannot find his beloved anywhere, he will come to you, spinning and spinning. That Krishna, who is very anxious to meet Radharani, is very dear to the Mandaris. I want to put something, put some Thank drops you. here. <laughs> What, what is she doing there? She is telling 
Mandra is telling Swamini. Oh, your eyes are so restless because you are looking. Where is your beloved? But I tell you, he is looking for you. And when he comes, he will be sp spinning around. I just seeing these wonderful earrings. So I read just in another uh, verse before, because these 30 uh, verses, they are so full of nectar, of the description of the Mandri services, how she is increasing Swamini's feelings. And what she is doing, she is crystallizing the Leela before Baba Moi, because she Matiradika is already full of feelings. She is, why is she restlessly looking? She is already feeling his presence with every jewelry, with every ornamentation. She feels he is there because she is fully connected. And the Mandri is like, putting a crystal on it. You know, when you put a crystal in the sun, then more of colors are coming out. And so Mandri is putting the, the crystal on Swamini's feelings. The purified hearts of their, you know, their hearts are like mirrors and they can feel Swamini's feelings and they also feel Mohan's desires he wants to meet. So, because Radharani is always absorbed, it's like an ocean of Leela Ras that is in her. And Tulasi makes great oceans. I just, I don't, uh, it's not my words. It's all Ananda Das Babaji's words, but I love them so much because in some small way, I can feel how actually Radhika's love makes the ocean waves of Mohan because Mohan's love is also like an ocean. And Radhika makes the waves on that beautiful ocean of Rasa. But the Kinkaris, they make the waves on the ocean of Shimate Radhika's love for Mohan. So I thought it was a beautiful... Uh, flow of this love, how it is happening that usually we speak about the ocean of of, of Ras, of Rasa Raj, of Krishna, and Shimati Radhika is causing the waves here. But Shimati Radhika's love is even more of an ocean. And who is creating the waves there is the small kinkaris who are really feeling what she is feeling right now. And they are increasing her eagerness and her feelings like that. And that's why they are also so happy when they can do it and when they can see what Gauravani will tell us, how Krishna becomes so eager now. Radhe, Radhe. Actually, someone near to me was giving a spark of the feelings and this was like yes krishna may have the flute and he may attract all the gopis with his flute but actually with this hoop earrings the kinkari proudly will attract Krishna and he will spinning and spinning and spinning around Radharani. I just wanted to share that thought with you also. So we go on reading. Tulasi replies, I will make Murasatru, who agitates all the gopis, which is matchless, all attractive beauty and sweetness, spin around you like a disc. When he cannot find his beloved anywhere, he will come to you, spinning and spinning. That Krishna, who is very anxious to meet Radharani, 
It's very dear to the Manjuris. Only that Krishna was very anxious to meet Radharani. The Kinkaris are very proud of the sweet form of their mistress, and they say, I will bring Murasatru here, spinning like a disc, by attracting him with his disc-shaped hoop earrings. In Purvarak, a duty, a messenger, describes Shyam Sundara's condition to Srimati when he anxiously searches for her. O Radhe, when Krishna sees the golden garland of Champaka flowers, Jai Shri Radhe. The half gods actually wanted to praise Radharani. So when Krishna sees the golden garland of Champaka flowers that Subal gives him, his mind trembles and tears of passionate love flow from his eyes. O oh, beautiful, fortunate girl, your form always awakens great love in his heart. Day and night he murmurs, Prishabhanu Nandini, Prishabhanu Nandini, without saying anything else. Although hundreds of thousands of fortunate girls speak sweet words to him, he does not listen to them even in his dreams. He can only pronounce the first syllable of your name, Ra. But out of ecstasy, he cannot pronounce the other one, Ra. His eyes carry streams of tears. That jewel of man rolls on the ground. Who can describe his distress? Govinda Das submits this news about Kanu to your lotus feet. Know that he feels miserable and that only your grace can destroy his suffering. Tulasi says, although it is just an insignificant ornament, it will still cause Krishna to spin around after I put it on you. So we can understand that not the ornament, but the ornament on Swamini has this effect. That was my intention. I wanted to agitate him, make him spin around like this, searching and searching for you until he meets you. <coughs> Krishna is very dear to the Mandaris when he becomes anxious to meet Sri Radhika. 
the heart of the kinkery is filled with pride when she sees the sweet form of her mistress and she says these disc-like earrings will make Murashatru spin like a disc and bring him to you. How many hundreds of experiences of Krishna to Lassi gives to Swamini in this way? The word Mayaka in the text is a sign of humility. I am not qualified to serve you, but you are all merciful, and you have accepted this Sevika maidservant. Alas! <laughs> Although you are anxious to meet Shyam, I have not been able to bring him here. How unfortunate I am! Despite all this, you are full of love, Prema Mai. And I have placed these disc shaped hairpins above your ears to pull Sham towards you, spinning and spinning. I will agitate even Murashatru, who can agitate all the gopis. The night of the Rasa dance in the night of the Rasa dance, the gopis personally expressed how agitated they were by seeing Krishna's beauty and sweetness. I have a question here because now the next paragraph is all about the beauty of Krishna. And I wanted to stop here and ask the devotees to explain, <coughs> help me understand. Because I know this is a very um, um, prominent verse. We have read it a lot of times, I remember. And I wanted to ask two things now. One thing, Murashatru, is that the name of Krishna who is like killing a demons, something like that? Maybe you, you know Goranga? And uh, I wanted to ask about these disc-shaped hairpins. I feel that the Darcy is also like putting a magic spell on these hairpins. She's doing some magic with them, <laughs> it seems. How he is, you know, how Ananda Gopal Goswami <clears throat> is expressing it, that these hairpins make him spin. How they make him spin? Is there a magic? like a you know like a witchcraft behind that <laughs> magic is Radhe Radhe magic is that Krishna whenever he sees Radhika he feels that he see her just the first time and this is the first magic of Anurag. And what's happened when he sees her with this hair spin around the ear, he is so attracted with this kind of beauty of Radhika and especially with her sweet ear that he is trying to spin around like a mad madman. In completely intoxicating. And of course, Manjaris are doing this seva to putting Radhika's hair spin very intentionally to make him mad, to make him intoxicate. Because 
In that way, they are serving also Krishna through Radharani, through Radhika's beauty, attraction. They are serving Krishna and allowed him to faint out of this spinning around himself. So this is the magic, yes. It's some kind of spell out. I'm spelling out you. And this is the Manjari Bhav Seva to, to put all spell out on Krishna. You know? But this word, it's so nice that you ask this. Murashatru is actually <laughs> a code word. Because like you said, it's killing the demon Mura in one sense. And uh, we know that many devotees are praising, glorifying Krishna because he's so strong that he kills this Mura. And, uh, but the behind meaning is why Krishna is Mura Shatru for the gopis. It said in the words, and Gauravaniji read it. Why he, Tulasi is calling Krishna, you are Mura Shatru. You are chanting all the gopis. You conquered them. Because the Mura, one of the meaning of the Mura is ugliness. And he kills all demoniac ugliness in the person with his beauty, with his sweetness, with his kindness. And because he kills all ugliness of the world, of demoniac mentality, all these different low, very low urges, he is becoming more sweet and more attractive and because of that, gopis are completely mad out of love of him. So it means that he is so attractive to the gopis and he is attractive to the world. But Manjaris wants to see this strong Mura Shatri, Shatru who kills all ugliness and is very attractive to the gopis to spin around completely out of himself. And they're, in that way, they are glorifying Radhika. And they, in that way, they are very proud on Radhika. Because he can chant all the gopis. All gopis. It doesn't mean if they are Visham Sneha, Sama Sneha, or whatever. He can conquer them. But he cannot conquer Radhika, my Radhika, and also he cannot conquer Manjaris. So this is the joking way of Manjaris, as I understand, approach to Krishna, calling him, addressing him, hey Murashatru, like in Radhakund, Arista, the person who killed Arista, you are so strong, but I'm sorry, in front of my Radhika, you are melting completely. What is the use of your braveness and strongest? Here is also, you are such a hero. Everyone is glorifying you because you killed the demoniac mentality. You, you killed this Mura, ugliness, which demoniac mentality is bringing. And you are attracting the gopis. But still, my dear, you are drunken. I make you drunken in front of my Radhika. Just with a small ornament around her ear. Just with, those, with this small ornament, which is in touch with Mahabhava, is enough to spin you around. So Manjaris are glorifying Radharani, her feelings, ornaments of her feelings and in that way they are also glorifying the Krishna but who is not Murashatru only someone who is spinning around spinning around spinning around so this is my <laughs> beautiful yes they say to Krishna in a very uh, 
proud and very strong way they grow when they say it. Yes, Murashatru, you can make others spin, but we will make you spin in front of our Swamini. And you can do nothing about it. <laughs> you will enjoy it also. And our Swamini will also enjoy it. And we will enjoy it when you are both spinning around each other. <laughs> You are muted. Sorry. This is the only way how we can drown in the ocean of sorrow <laughs> <laughs> and agitation. If we feel this concentration, this condensed love, otherwise we will never feel the rasa of sorrow, rasa of loving separation, rasa of agitation. So just leave all this bodily concept of life as suffering and drown in Chanchalakshi eyes. Because Chanchalakshi, we will have Chanchalakshi or we will meditate on Radhika's Chanchalakshi. <laughs> My, our mind is always Chanchala. <laughs> our ego is always Chanchala. But if this mind is connected with Chancha Lakshi Radhika, then he will be perfectly situated, perfectly drowned in the nectar of Chancha Lakshi, Tara Lakshi, or Atyakshi, different name with different names. Raghunath is calling, glorifying. This uh, Radhika, he's addressing Radhika with different names, glorifying her restless eyes. And this restless eyes, like you said, is the sign of Mahabhav. This is the sign of pure transcendental love. So we need to drown in this Chancha Lakshi, and she will receive us. For sure. She's waiting also. She has open eyes. Nayana. Kamala Nayani. Eyes like lotus flowers. She's waiting. Come, come. Drown in my eyes. Let your eyes become my eyes. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> I was drowning. I became also very restless. And I realized that Gurudev was listening. That was my uh, spinning today. <laughs> Perfect spinning. Yes. Perfect and, spinning uh, because we have to learn from such personalities how to also spin, how to relish from them, not our feelings. We should assign. I want to merge my feelings in their feelings. I don't want my feelings. I want to feel Raghunath's feelings. And in that way, it will become mine. <laughs> yes, and it has to become closer and closer, you know. Sometimes the feelings become estranged. And uh, I think. It's also good to be able to be honest about that, that it happens to all of us. Yes, that honestly is important. It happens, and, 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 but still we, it can shift very quickly. It can shift at any moment, at any second. Yes. And in the same way, the Goswamis, they were also under all the trees and at all the guts, and in all the forest and all the mountains, always crying, oh, where are you, Radhika? No, where are you? You have been here. Can I, can I connect with you here? Can I serve you here? So we are now here in this planet, and we also hope for this. And then when Gurudev comes, our prayers are also fulfilled because a Dasi has come. Dasi has come and shown... Oh, you are dear to me. I am so happy that you are discussing the Leelas, you are remembering, you are continuing your service 
even if I have to go for some, you know, health issue. So I'm very, I'm very thankful that you all today came together and that I feel also by our love and our endeavor, all others become happy. And Gurudev also feels some separation. He's also coming and missing us. And so that was also my highlight today, spinning in the love of Gurudev and feeling also my feelings in the desperation of, uh, you know, desiring so much to, to have one sidelong glance of his mercy on our endeavors, on our little endeavors. What do you think, Auravani? I can just say I'm so thankful to all aspects of this sharing. I, I cannot express my thankfulness enough that Gurudev is, is actually giving us this possibility because of Radharani's mercy he is giving to us. He is actually the messenger giving us this possibility and that all his devotees are coming together again and again and, and sharing this and go deep, deeper and deeper. And from my view, very fast, actually. I was living in other uh, communities of spiritual people, and I can say I never saw people fast growing like that. And I think, I hope, that my awareness is right, this is because of this family we are in. And this starts, of course, with the Parampara, which is very, very clean. And of course, it's the mercy from Gurudev emanating to us. But the whole line is behind, we have to see. So this power is so pure. And I'm so thankful and I'm so proud to be a little, little, little spark and part of this community. Thank you all for your open sharing, for your sharing of your heart feelings. And please bless me that one day I will become like Rati, you know, Rati. This, this Rati mandra is, mandra is full of Rati. I mean like this, like Gurudev, full of Rati. And these Mandaris who are full of Ratis. So I hope we will come to that point one day, all, all of us. Jai Shri Rati.